Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today is another NHL discussion video, which will be uh, pretty exciting uh, to talk about because we are almost there to the new year of the NHL, which is, I gotta say, pretty damn exciting. Another new free agency day, which is going to be a big one. There's been a lot of big signings. Uh, we're going to begin to kind of all of them, all the big storylines that uh, has kind of gone around and we're going to kind of start things off with the qualifying offers that are going to be going around the NHL. And I think they're going to be absolutely huge. As you got Mitch Marner, Brain Point, just the, 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 the barrage of players who haven't signed deals with their teams yet. And there's a lot of things going on. And first of all, let's start things off with Toronto. Like, Toronto is probably one of the best players. Um, I mean, they're all equally good with Sebastian Aho. Charlie McAvoy, Sebat, or who you already said, uh, Brain Point. You just got so many good free agents out there. It's kind of just an unbelievable mixture of players this year. Toronto, they only have six point nine million dollars left to get Mitch Murray. As you guys all know, they just signed Andreas Janssen to a three point four million deal and Kasperi Kapanen to uh, three point two. So. Um, there's been a lot of rumors with Toronto trying to get rid of Nikita Zaitsev, which I don't think might happen. There's been rumors that he might be going to Vancouver. Um, I don't believe it's going to be possible that they're going to get rid of Nikita Zaitsev's contract for a bit. Uh, so don't see Toronto. They're probably going to be stuck with that $6.9 million and they're probably going to lose out on Mitch Murr. Uh, the big people that have been in on Mitch Murr from what I've been hearing is the New York Islanders, which would be huge for the New York Islanders picking up Mitch Murr. Uh, what I've also heard is that the Toronto Maple Leafs are just thinking of signing uh, Mitch Marner to a two-year deal. Like, was worth, like, I think almost $9 million. Somewhere around that. Just, like, a cheap little deal. Uh, just, like, a bridge contract. I don't think that's possible now with only them having $6.9 million and still having to sign a defenseman. Uh, and that's a, a, the thing that Toronto has to do is sign a defenseman. Um, but that's been one of the big storylines. Uh, Tampa Bay, of course, another big team with a lot of big storylines, having, of course, Brian Point as one of their big free agent guys, and them still having to put a defensive core out there, right? Like, you only have $10 million. Next year, you got Andre Vasilevsky. Uh, you get rid of Ryan Cl uh, Callahan's uh, contract, which is nice, but that's on IR, so they don't really have to worry about his contract anymore. But you got a lot of players with a lot of contracts, and... But, I mean, brain point this year, it's going to suck to lose him. I think if you can get up to a bridge deal would be nice. From what I was hearing from the rumors, they were nowhere near close to signing a deal yet. And it's it's almost July 1st, for fuck's sakes. It's getting really close to it. I'm hoping that they're able to lock down some sort of a deal uh, for brain point. Because brain point's a wonderful guy. I think he's going to be uh, a great player for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, they definitely do need to get him back on the team as he's one of their future guys, right? Uh, you also have Calgary. They have $12 million. They have to sign Kachuk and a bunch of other players. They've been rumored to go after uh, a player uh, for goaltending-wise. Uh, they've also been rumored to trade away one of their defense, which I think would be a horrible decision for them to do is to trade one of their defense. I think you just keep the team the way that you have it uh, because, I mean, this is a great team. you got a great team coming towards this year. Uh, it's going to be a good team. Uh, otherwise, but for that, you got Carolina, who Sebastian Ajo has been having some problems with. Of course, as we all know, Carolina is kind of like a lower budget team. They do have $21 million in projected salary cap space, but you've got to remember that ticket sales and stuff like that, it might not be leading to Sebastian Ajo getting a contract because he's been rumored to almost be signing a $10 million contract, which is unbelievable. I mean, that is a lot of money. Uh, do I think all these qualifying offer players will sign back with the team? Yeah, most of them. I don't think Mitch Marner's going to be signing back with Toronto. Uh, he's going to probably go to another team. New York Islanders have been rumored. I don't think New York Islanders really wants to fuck with their future that much. Unless Lou really wants to fuck over the Toronto Maple Leafs such as what they did. Which is a possibility, but you would have to give up like four first round draft picks. And even I wouldn't even want to risk that type of uh, my future towards that. If you could get Marner to like a bridge deal and only have to give up like, I think it's eight million and below. You only have to give up a first, second, and third or two firsts or something like that. I can't remember the exact rules. Uh, but there's definitely a lot of qualifying offer guys out there. Boston has a lot of them. They have a pretty good amount of players that they had to sign with McAvoy and Carlo. Uh, there's going to be a lot of shit going to be going down this, uh, this upcoming, uh, 
this upcoming year. And it's going to be really exciting to see what will happen, honestly. Uh, so let's take a look at all the trades that have happened. Because there's been a lot of trades since we last made the video talking about the big deal with uh, Oli Mata and stuff like that. And um, Eric Carlson and stuff like that we haven't talked about in a while. Um, Buffalo Sabres, they picked up Colin Miller today. Uh, wonderful deal for the Buffalo Sabres. I wish we were able to do this, honestly, uh, as the Edmonton Oilers. I mean, we picked up Adam Larson for fucking Taylor Hall, uh, which is absolutely ridiculous that we did that. But Vegas has been trying to clear up some cap space. They got rid of uh, Eric Halla and Colin Miller, which I think gets them close to the salary cap. Um, 82, so they need to still shut off one more player. So, like, a player like a Cody Eakin or Ryan Reeves, I'm thinking that those two, those guys will be definitely in play. They don't got any money, and it's really loaded up. But you get guys to can take a look at this. Mark Stone, 9.5. Max Petcheretti, 7. Paul Stastny, 6.5. Will Carlson, 5.9. Riley Smith, 5 mil. Jonathan Forsythal, 5 mil. Alex Tuck, 4.7 million. It's just like their whole roster, all like 12 of their forwards take up about $52 million. And those are just those top six guys. And that is a lot of money being shedded towards your offensive core. Max Pacioretty, of course, was a horrible fucking deal because he's been playing like shit. He only had like 40 points and it's just horrible. Um, but Eric Holler got traded for Nicholas Roy in a fifth round pick. So, I mean... Vegas has gotten some picks out of the, the shedding some salary cap. Uh, two fifth round draft picks and a second. And that's uh, for a top four pick or a top four defenseman, which is unbelievable in Colin Miller because he's a solid defenseman. So we'll see how that turns out for the Buffalo Sabres. A minor deal, Andre Burakovsky going to Colorado. Colorado, I mean, you're picking up a guy. And I think what Colorado is doing is really smart. They're, they're playing more of the tactical approach. I'm really excited to see what they'll do this summer. Um, because they shed away some salary cap, trading away uh, Carl Soderbrook, who was $4.75 million. Yeah, they might have lost that deal, but they save $3.75 million in the next couple of years. Calvin DeHaan's also going to Chicago. Uh, otherwise, Ryan Harmon also got traded, and he was on vacation and did not know uh, he was traded. And the big deal, I gotta say the big winners of kind of like before... Uh, free agency and stuff like that was the New Jersey Devils. They had a fantastic draft. Not just that, they got bloody good players. I mean, you also got JT Miller going to the Vancouver Canucks, which will also be big. Uh, but we're going to be talking about the one big trade, and that was the New Jersey Devils picking up P.K. Subban, which is unbelievable because you still have $25 million left in the cap space for signing, of course, Taylor Hall next year, which you're going to have to deal with. And with doing that... You, you built a pretty good team around Taylor Hall with Jack Hughes and P.K. Subban. There's still lots to build around. You still need another good defenseman, I would say. I mean, Andy Green's kind of dropping down. But you have Sammy Vatton, you have Damian Severson, and you have Will Butcher. If you can get Corey Schneider back to where he was playing really good, then fuck, you got a good team going for you already with your defensive core. You need only one more good defenseman, and you're looking good. Four core, I mean, you got a good forward core to start building around with Nico Heischer and stuff like that. I think one or two more pickups for the New Jersey Devils can really be a big statement for their team. And I think it's something that they kind of need to do. But them picking up um, P.K. Subban is a huge player. And I think it's a more of like, it's not a desperation attempt. It's more of an attempt to try and keep uh, Taylor Hall around. Because we have seen this a lot from a lot of players where they're just ditching the their old um um teams just to go and uh play with a different team because there's more money and there has been there's been money thrown out for example john tavares who's been i gotta say the biggest free agent pickup in a long fucking time we have not seen that big of a buzz around a free agency in a long time and yet again we're getting that big buzz around everyone uh, because of the huge free agency that we're going to be getting now. And I mean, there's big player names like Artemi Pernarn, Matt Duchesne, you got Sergei Baboski, you got Joe Pavelski, Semyon Varlamov, Tyler Myers. Tyler Myers has been rumored to make 7 to $8 million for a fucking top four defenseman, man. So you guys can see the stocks are rising in the NHL, and it's unbelievable. Now, what do I think is going to happen this free agency? And who do I think will be the big winners out of this situation? Because there's only a couple teams that could spend this amount of money. 
one team that people have not been talking about, and that is the Colorado Avalanche. I mean, they have Miko Ranton as an RFA, who they've clearly leveled out some salary cap for him. They have $38 million in cap space, and they have to sign a whole crap ton of project guys and uh, Ker uh, Ker uh, Kerfoot um, and stuff like that. They, they need to build uh, at least a whole entire top six, and they still need to produce a good defense core. This team is unbelievable to me. Unbelievable what this team is doing in Colorado. And I believe that this team is going to surprise everyone. They're going to do some humongous moves. Um, and I think the big, big free agent, uh, Tommy Pernard, uh, he's been rumored to go to New York Rangers. And I think that's going to possibly be happening uh, with Cape Caco and stuff like that. I think he's definitely going to be going to New York. New York Rangers have really changed the tempo of their team in a very quick amount of time if they're able to pick up Panarin, if you really think about it. You get Capo Kako, who can already play, right? You still have Mika Spinajak, Chris Kreider, last time they're mistaken off, Shrom. You still have a good roster kind of build around. And you they got a great defense core. Now, yes, it's not the best in the world. Jacob Chuba, you still got to sign. Lundqvist, he's kind of fallen off the face of the earth. But you got a pretty good amount of future players in your system. Vitaly Karpatsov, who has been heard like he's going to be a pretty good goddamn player. There's some pretty good future in uh, New York. And, I mean, it might not be this year, but Jeff Gorton, who was the GM of the Boston Bruins before Peter Shirelli took over. And, man, Jeff Gorton did, like, a overhaul of the team and the reason why the Boston Bruins were so good and were able to win a cup back in the day um, was because of him almost and uh, New York Rangers I think yeah they have 17 million dollars why spend it all on Artemi Panarin doesn't make ideally sense and I do agree with you guys on that part I don't think spending 11 million dollars on the fucking Russians gonna fix your problems there in New York and I don't believe in signing a bunch of free agents to really expensive contracts but do you uh, I'm really excited to see what will happen in this free agency with a lot of good players out there. And I'm really excited to see what my Edmonton Oilers will do as we don't have very much cap space, but we still have uh, some choices to make and stuff like that. So there's going to be a lots of decisions that teams are going to have to make um, and stuff like that. I'm really excited to see what will happen with this upcoming free agency. It will be an absolutely blast to watch. Um, now, I won't be watching it. I won't be doing a live reaction, which I wanted to do, but I'm going to be going over to my girlfriend's house. So you guys won't be seeing a video until probably the 3rd of July. So you guys will be seeing two days after free agency, and I will be talking about everything that happened, all the free agency signings and stuff like that. So it should be a lot of fun. I'm excited to see who signs, who stays, who goes, whatever. Um, Artemi Pinar and Sergei Bavosky, they've been rumored to go to Florida. I don't know what will happen there, but it's going to be exciting to see what will happen. Now, I'm going to make one guesstimation or estimation here with free agency on who will be a winner and who will be a loser. Now, who will be the losers of this free agency? Now, I think... The one team that's been in the talks a lot about shit is the Florida Panthers. And then, I, I don't know. I, I feel a little bit optimistic about them because I really want them to do good. But I don't believe that the Florida Panthers are going to get really anyone to come to their team. I don't think it's going to be Florida. It's going to be either New York or some other team that has more of a reputation. Now, also, other teams that are going to win... Uh, I think the New York Rangers could possibly have a huge free agency this year with the way that they've been very talkative to a lot of teams this year. They might be a big winner. Colorado as well. They're in my back pocket right now. I think they're going to be huge winners. The huge losers of this uh, trade deadline or this free agency, I think will be Minnesota. They already missed out on Phil Kessel. But I think they're going to be really stupid this free agency and they're going to go and do something stupid just like they did with Ryan Suter and Zach Parise. And also... Uh, I don't know who else to go after. Chicago has been pretty stupid this free agency signing, but are getting both Ali Manet and Calvin DeHaan, who almost have five million dollars worth of cap space. That's real smart. Uh, anyways, I think those are going to be your big losers of this uh, free agency. We won't know until the season starts, until the actually the next season ends. But thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Adios, amigos.